Oh, yeah. That's right. I flew over to Capcom's office in London in order to play some Street Fighter 6 ahead of the launch next month. And I had a fantastic time. I flew over in the morning, only got slightly lost in London, <laughs> and I got a chance to play some World Tour, check out the mini games. I played up to chapter three, I believe. The thing I was really most excited about was getting my hands on Chun Li. And I had an idea going in that I really wanted to have a look at all of the characters that weren't in the previous betas. So I ended up recording a bunch of footage, which hopefully you have watched already. If not, I did a video where I took all of the supers and critical arts for all of those characters. I actually wrote them in a notebook here. I got JP, Manon, Kami, Marissa, Zangief, DJ, E Honda, Dalsim, Blanket, and Lee. I also did, of course, get Chuns, but people have seen those already. You might be seeing it on screen now. I haven't decided yet. So let's talk World Tour. I made an absolute monstrosity of a character, which seemed to be the tradition that people are doing right now. I didn't want to spend too much time in character creation because I only had a limited amount of time. So I speed ran through the part of the story that's covered in the demo to get to the good stuff. And the good stuff is becoming Chun Li's pupil, getting that spinning bird kick in Kikoken. It was really, really fun. Uh, I played on a stick and um, I, I'm planning on making a full world tour video. So I'll go way more into depth on everything there. But um, they did take into account that a number of players would play on a stick and it only has one stick. So how do you control the camera? Well, you hold down a heavy punch and then you can use light punch, medium punch, light kick, medium kick in order to rotate the camera in four cardinal directions. <laughs> and in like an hour and a half of gameplay, I never got used to that. I think I was getting there. So I don't know if I'll figure out a solution of I'll use a controller for all the walking around and then swap immediately the stick when I get into a fight. It's pretty damn fun. Something I was very impressed by were the mini games, um, especially the Hado Pizza mini game. It has a really clever way of teaching players the common inputs that you'd see. So your quarter circle forward, your DP motion, the Z motion, um, half circles. It, it goes into like, the supers and the critical art movements as well. And it's just done it in like a gradual way that even brand new players who their first foray into Street Fighter is World Tour mode. And you come out of it, you play these mini games. If, if you're just like competitive in terms of like, I need to get the high score in this mini game, you're gonna come out of it. Like Mr. Miyagi has taught Daniel-san, you know, wax on, wax off. Yeah, I've made the pizzas. I've done hard mode pizzas. Now I go into versus, oh my God. I'm doing wax on, I'm doing make pineapple pizza and Chun-Li's like lightning legs have just come out. You know what, just watch the, the video that's coming out of the mini games for more info on that. <laughs> I do like wandering around Metro City. Um, it has a nice day night cycle. You know, I'm gonna stop talking about World Tour. Let's get into meat of things. Chun-Li, she feels amazing to play. There's a lot more complexity to her. You can do stance into any six buttons and they do a different move. And you can cancel going into stance almost immediately. So you don't have to wait for the animation of her going into her sitting motion. She just goes straight out of it. And I feel like that extra complexity means there's going to be a much higher skill ceiling for Chun-Li combos. But they're going to be so much more satisfying to pull off. And they can be way more interesting to watch as well. I really, really like her Super 2. What you can do is 
cancel EX legs into Super 2, and then jump cancel Super 2, hit them in the air. I was doing medium punch. I'm sure there's a more optimal way of, of doing this. But then you have an option. You can go into EX legs then immediately. Or if you have meter, you can do her level 1 super, like the aerial Kiko show. So you just completely chain a level 2 and level 1 super into each other. I'm sure the scaling probably doesn't work out great. Like if you have the bar for 3, maybe you just want to do 3. I didn't have enough time to fully lab everything, but... You bet your ass. When this game comes out, I'm going to go into training mode. I'm going to find the flashiest combo. I'm a bit infamous for my uh, aerial combo in Street Fighter V. That was a bit of my signature move. It got me very, very excited. I did spend some time playing a little bit of every character that wasn't in the beta. Um, I really, really like Lily. She's really, really interesting. Um, she builds up wind stacks. And then whenever you use a wind-based move, it modifies it. Manon is pretty cool as well. I released a gameplay video of me getting absolutely annihilated uh, by Matt's Manon. And every time she hits command grab, a little counter goes up. And each subsequent command grab does a little bit more damage. And she hits like a goddamn truck. She has this kind of uh, Laura style dashing forward command grab. And I get oh, super duper scary. I feel like she's going to be an absolute menace to fight. The one person who I find extraordinarily interesting is JP. He can snap his fingers. He can set up these traps that then kind of go off over time. And he can teleport into them. It feels like some sort of Guilty Gear character almost. Really refreshing. I dig it. It's going to be very complicated though. He has a homing projectile. Which I'm not quite sure how to deal with. Because you're kind of conditioned in Street Fighter. You see a projectile. Either you block. Or you jump over it. Or if your character has a move that goes under it. You do that move. This one takes advantage of the fact that most people will see it. And they will try to jump over it and it whoop, curves up and gets you. And TJ was quite fun as well. Although I did get caught a little bit. I spent a lot of time figuring out how to do his super two. He has three variations. So you do your input and then either you hit low, medium or heavy punch, right? And then out of that, you have to enter a sequence of light, medium, heavy punch in succession. Light, medium, heavy kick. So you're going... Pop, 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 pop. It took me forever to figure out the rhythm. And then I got all three in succession and I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then I found out afterwards, he has a follow-up. He has two different follow-ups that you can do immediately after hitting that full sequence. And I was running out of time at that stage. So I went back to try and get them. I lost the rhythm, guys. I lost the rhythm. That's the most important thing with DJ, keeping that rhythm. Also, his theme is pretty good too. A really nice quality of life feature that this game has is a very quick rematch button. Like you can hit that basically immediately after you see that KO. And you're back in, ready to fight immediately. And it doesn't force you and both players have to hit rematch at the same time. So only if both of you are really eager to get in. Otherwise, you can get that little breather. You know, if you're on a tournament stage or something like that. You want to get those reaction shots of players. You can still do that. It's good. It's good. Let's talk about drive impacts. And drive parries. And drive rush. There's a lot of drive. And overdrive. Overdrives are the EX moves in this game. The drive bar. You start with six. At the start of each round. That's your EX gauge. That is your focus attack, which is your drive impact, which is armored, and it will cause this crumple animation to appear on your enemy. And they can counter with their own drive impacts, or they can do a parry. The main thing to keep an eye of is 
you will recharge your drive meter or your drive gauge over time. But if that hits zero, you go into... You enter a state where you cannot parry, you cannot use any of the, the drive functionality until the bar is completely full again. It's like, it's like a soft stun, I would almost call it. The nice thing about the drive impact as well is it pushes them back if they're blocking. So if you do it in the corner, you get a wall splat, which is pretty sick. But for all you Street Fighter 4 fans, FADC is back because you can initiate a drive parry and then you can dash out of it for one bar and you can get in. But that's not all. You can also dash out of a lot of normals. It's not quite the same as, as FADC. Like you're doing a combo. It ends with like a medium hit. You dash in the middle of it, burn one bar meter, go in, start something else, go in for a grab even. Very aggressive. I really like the pace of this game. It's very fast. Another thing about the drive gauge is that you take chip damage to the drive gauge. So if you're blocking, you got zero HP and you have drive gauge, you'll take chip and you won't die. As soon as that drive gauge goes out, you know, that you start taking that on your regular health bar. And it's not just a blocking either. Any point of damage you take simultaneously takes HP and drive away from you. You also have a V reversal equivalent in drive reversal. So if you press forward and you're two heavies, so heavy punch, and heavy kick while blocking, you'll burn two bars to push someone away. Honestly, they, they have a bit of everything in this game. I'm very glad I got some 1v1 action on though. Initially, I thought I would just get some like CPU matches, do some training mode. But actually getting hands-on, fighting against the player who actually knew that character pretty well. Like, I said to Man, hey, yeah, who do you play? He's like, I'm playing Manon, but you know, I don't get much time to play her, so I'm, I'm not very good. And I was like, okay, yeah, well, you probably kicked my butt. That dude was downplaying so much. <laughs> he was so good. I was a bit embarrassed putting that chunny <laughs> footage out because I'm like, oh my god, I lose so badly. But I've been looking back and I'm like, you know what? It's like the first 10 minutes of me playing chun -Li. I got some of my fundamentals in there, you know. I was trying to figure out what her anti-air is. Down down kick is a freaking sweet anti-air. It's so satisfying to, to get. I'm going to try and show footage of this while I'm talking probably very very good and um slowly over the course of our sets if i show them in succession you, you'll be like okay she's getting the chun down she's figuring out what the good moves are what's a good you know counter hit move something that was very hard to do is stop myself from just playing street fighter 5 like my muscle memory everything was shouting okay Someone's knocked down, you go over, forward heavy kick. That's a pretty decent move because it keeps that pressure on them. But in this, the timing's different. Maybe it still does work, but my timing was all off. She's also got that overhead flip that hits them from behind. I'm gonna have to check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a much shorter range now. It felt way shorter. I really need to figure out her good like B and B combo. I tried to link light kick legs, light kick legs. I couldn't quite get it in the time that I had. I'm sure something like that will work. It's probably going to be light kick legs, light kick drive rush legs, or you know something like that. But her EX legs are very interesting because if you just do EX legs, you'll do like three or four hits, and then we'll stop. Whereas if you hit two kicks while that animation is playing, it will do an extended finisher, which has a hard knockdown, it seems. However, if you go for that extender, you cannot cancel into Super 2 anymore. So it gives you way more options and flexibility than you have in Street Fighter V. That just kind of adds to her complexity. It seems like she has every move she has ever had pretty much in any game. It's incredible. Uh, like, I, I got overwhelmed for sure. 
let me tell you the time i had there absolutely flew by i have a notebook right in front of me which i've been flipping through i wrote down so many things that i intended to capture and i maybe captured like half of what i wanted i was like okay time's up and i'm like oh no there's so much more i wanted to see but don't worry i have plenty of stuff i have enough for a bunch more videos before street fighter 6 comes out don't you worry after that i very quickly took a few photos and uh b-roll that you're probably seeing now from the capcom office hopped on a train hopped on another train went back to the airport got on my flight and i made it home before midnight so i did a round trip from dublin to london and back in one day and it was exhausting i think next time I'm invited over for something. If they want me back, we'll see how well these videos do. Hint, hint. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to comment and share with your friends. This has been a bit of a rambly video, but I, I really wanted to just kind of sit down, get all my thoughts out, and have some more structured videos coming down the line. Uh, I'll probably talk about some of this on the stream as well. Anyway, I hope you liked my travel vlog. We'll see if I do more of these in the future. Um, this is the first time I've done this style of video, so really would appreciate your feedback. Let me know if you like this kind of thing. It's like a, it's like a podcast. Am I doing a podcast right now? All right, I'm signing off. Stay tuned for more Street Fighter 6. Hit that bell. <laughs>